structured in a way. So we use a lot of diagrams, flows, and then simple mnemonics so that which can be understood very easily by the programmer community as well as the business users who use a totally different kind of a language. So having that kind of an expertise, it is naturally applicable when I start learning about heritage and start uh, uh, reading and understanding. My uh, work is I whatever I have learned and understood, I put it in simple presentations and talk. These talks gives me experience and better clarity and understanding so that I can read something more and learn something more in the same subject. So that has been the, the, the way how I transformed from banking to uh, heritage. So to start the uh, discussion, uh, the first uh, bright uh, early morning talk and uh, thanks for giving me this slot and thanks for giving one more opportunity to spread heritage awareness to the next generation. Thanks for the government uh, MSGC Reva College and uh, it's uh, omnipresent, uh, omnipresent mean 24 by 7 uh, service support by uh, Skandi Mishra Sir who answers queries or doubts even at night, 11 o'clock or early morning, 5 o'clock, we get some messages saying that this is the update, this thing. Excellent energy sitting through seven days of continuous presentation. I pranam and then thanks to you. Let me share the presentation now. Is the presentation visible to you? No, sir. Hello. No, sir. No, sir. It started, but now it started, but now it started. Is it clear? No, I don't think so. I don't no. think so. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I pressed the wrong oh, button. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Stop okay, sharing okay. button instead of hide. Okay, my mistake. So today, in the next uh, 15 minutes, we are going to see about uh, evolution of building materials for sacred spaces as a talk number 57. I'm amazed. Uh, so many talks, so many interesting subjects in a short span. And then this has been consistently running for the sixth series and uh, it is becoming bigger and more interesting. <clears throat> so uh, I, um, while I am presenting, I won't be having a, a view of uh, the other controls. So if, if there is some interruption in audio or video, please call me. So to, before we start the discussion, a brief on the uh, uh, the content which enabled me to do it. So uh, as usual, I thank Google Endeavor for the uh, content and picture which which uh, it gives sitting there in a desktop and I'm able to analyze and explore a lot of things. And the Wikipedia Pujari, not for the content, more for the collation and the reference material it gives where you can go to the original source and receive the interpretation ourselves. And a lot of images from Google and Wikipedia, VMIS, and Latitude, and other things. And uh, one book uh, uh, on architecture of Indian subcontinent by a Japanese architect, Takio Kamiya, was very useful to give an overview of uh, temples across various subcontinent, analyzed by uh, material, analyzed by style, and other things. It was a very good overview book, a good reference book. Uh, I owe this kind of an experience and presentation to Tamil Heritage Trust Chennai, uh, who is an NGO. And uh, the experience in organizing several site seminars to Tanjay, Kanchipuram, Orissa, Sanchi, ba uh, and uh, Chalikas of Badami, 
and very recently a detailed seven day tour to hoysala to understand the hoysala architecture in mysore and hassan area and uh, i should give be very thankful to uh, professor uh, shridhar ganapati uh, who is a friend of mine from tamil heritage trust and uh, a working professional geologist so from when we are discussing with him um, we get a lot of insight on the rocks the properties classification and uh, and other details so the guidance and the inputs from him was very useful to put this and uh, in terms of uh, temple architecture whatever i have understood from uh, dr shankar narayanan uh, of uh, sanskrit university tirupati dr manoj gundanna of um, uh, bangalore and then dr shivanagarity of uh, telangana who have been uh, presenting uh, the temple architecture in a in a simple way which can understand layman like us and then explain things so this things helped me put together the content in this we are going to see how the evolution of the materials uh, developed along with the grandness of uh, the temples and how it played a major function what are the major building materials they used and then uh, how they uh, evolved over a period of time and the rock rock has been a predominant material freely available and uh, very abundant varieties and this is where the content is very very uh, spread varied across the continent and how this rock edifices that will suit the time and uh, by using different rock types in temples how the characteristics of the temple changes and we will also see some modern temples so when you see evolution of the material usage for building temples temples were usually a higher sane and clean version of the living uh, houses of that era so earlier men used to live in natural caves and then there are no construction material whatever is available as natural caves adapted and then slowly he started using wood in a raw form like uh, tree branches and other things and then started shaping wood and then joining wood and a uh, lot of masonry work is uh, started then as he progressed he started building mud and when he came to plains and other things there are no rock shelters so using uh, the um, uh, the wet mud and then raw bulk bricks and then mixed with straw uh, they made rudimentary houses and then this is the earlier building materials and then later on uh, by error or by fire or something they found out that if the mud is baked it gives a better stability and then longevity and then they started instead of using mud they used mortar their lime paste as a bonding material so it, it this was a major early period development and later on once they went into iron age and then they got very good tools to uh, cut uh, rocks and other things they started modifying the natural caves or cut actual caves in the granite or any of the mountains then rather than cutting they started cutting down where they identify a, a large boulder and start cutting up unwanted portion and shape them into temples and finally started using metallic sheets metal shaped metal and everything and then the major revelation came in like how we started using uh, baked the mud uh, into the bricks which standardized the structure the cutting of stones into blocks and then start using them totally changed the the temple architecture mechanism and then whatever large temples we see now are because of this class where the stone is cut into manageable blocks and then it is stacked and then connected together 
and then huge temples were built. And then the recent innovation of cement, where you mix uh, gypsum and other things, it hardens into a very solid material, allows you to shape things in a totally different way and in whatever way you want with a very, very high bonding and then compression strength. And uh, embedding uh, gravel and uh, iron beams and shapes inside cement allows you to get beams and then sculptures of different shapes. So from the natural wood to the RCC beams, the, the temple building has progressed in different stages and bulk of the uh, temples what we see here are made up of stone blocks or recent temples on RCC and some of the earlier temples on this one. In between the monolithic and uh, the cut-in caves of uh, thousand years plus still exists. So this is a brief overview of how the, the temple were built using different materials over a period of time. Now, when we talk about basic class of building material, we have three major components. The blocks, where a material is cut into smaller size and start. And when it is stacked, there has to be the gap between this, which is used by some bonding material. And usually when the, the walls and structures become weak, uh, it is not entirely filled up of uh, the blocks. Usually what we do is on both sides you have the finished uh, wall and in between they put a lot of filler of uh, easily available material so that we have a solid wall uh, again at the same time save on the material cost. So if you see any, any building, these are the three basic components, the building blocks, the bonding material, and the filler material. So let us see what are the, the materials that are used in the temples. And this holds goods for our houses also. When you have building blocks, the earlier building blocks were the rock mass itself. So you have the rock mass, so you don't build anything on it. You cut in or cut down the cave according to the shape and then later on from the the rubble the broken rocks and other things and the people started building rudimentary houses this is where the megalithic burials and other things happen and then when they came into the plain they started using mud bricks and afterwards um, when the material is uh, improved, they started manipulating, instead of using raw uh, tree cuts and other things, started cleaning up wood, joining and other things. And with the baked bricks, rock blocks, metal beams, and then uh, the latest one, reinforced uh, cement concrete, where you have a shape, you have metal uh, inside it, you have gravel, and the final product is shaped will be a desired uh, size and uh, width. So these are the major evolution of building blocks. Now coming to the bonding material, you have mud. Earlier when there was rubble and the mud bricks were used, mud was used as a mud, uh, bonding material. And when wood was used, in some and uh, minerals, minerals, whatever it was available was used, and metals. When uh, wood was used, metal clips and other things were the primary bonding material to uh, keep the joints together. When we started building uh, the baked bricks, the combination was a lime mortar, which is a, a ground tape paste with a lot of additions, which solidified and kept the baked bricks in place. When the rock blocks started working out, either they have the metal clips or they have the rock companion joints where there is a hole in one section and then there is a projection in another section which gets locked, interlocking. And in some of the temples, they use molten material to be poured 
in between the gaps to bond subsequent uh, sections. So this is some of the, the, the bonding material which are used depending on what kind of a building block and what works well. In terms of filler, it can be anything. Uh, the major one used is the rubble, which is a, the, the recycled uh, demolished material or, um, um, or uh, demolished rock and sand and the gravel, finely broken uh, um, thing. And then now in modern days, we have a shape and then there is no building block or bonding material or so on. Entire thing is shaped in in wooden sections, and then the concrete is poured, which which is a one unified form, which is a building block plus bonding material plus filler material. So in a nutshell, this is how we can analyze any temple on what are the building blocks, how it was bonded together, and how it was put together. Now, when we talk about this, the earlier ones were the rock mass, where people are living in the natural caves. If you talk about natural caves, Meghalaya takes a cake, and uh, in Jaintia, Kasi Hills, and Garo Hills of Meghalaya, we have the 10 longest, out of the 10 longest and deepest cave systems, nine are available in Meghalaya. The, the topmost one, the Krem Liath Rock, is around 30 kilometers in length and goes through meanders. The interesting thing is, this is in Himalayan foothills and other things, mostly of limestone deposits. When water erosion and acidic uh, reaction, it uh, melts and, and uh, dilutes uh, the in-between uh, area and uh, holds and pathways and then uh, the grand uh, gaps are created to come up with this one. This is the earlier caves where temples were uh, kept. Um, Vaishnav Devi temple in uh, Jammu is a, a good example. Rakmas in Bimbetka. The, the other, other form of uh, thing is um, in metamorphosed quartzite or which is the, the again pressurized form of limestone. In Bimbitka, we have around 750 rock shelters which are spread over seven hills and around 10 kilometers radius. This rock system has been inhabited from ages, very old uh, ages. This is one of the oldest dwelling points in India from 100,000 years up to 200 BCE, people have been living there in various uh, locations, various things on the grand and natural caves that are possible. When we go into this cave temples, from the cave paintings and other things, we see very good evidence of uh, living, hunting from Stone Age all the way up to Bronze Age where horses were there. And uh, the way the temples are, the, the places were used is, predominantly with very minimal customization on the axis where it species. Now, when you look at rubble, when um, we see temples that are built on rough stones or uh, this one, this is how the rubble temples are built. And later on, uh, we have a structured mud bricks and baked bricks also. Here you have, and then you have granite. We Here we see the combination of all. This is uh, Sadhavan Kupam, one of the oldest uh, structural temple bases uh, relating to 200-300 BCE found near Mahabharipuram. Now mud. When we talk about mud, it is available all over the place. Many of the temples, many of the things are old in days were there, but we can't find the old ones. But even in many villages, small temples and others are built out of mud. Pre predominantly basic mud or with a mixture of straw and other fibrous material to give the bonding. 
coming to the wood it is predominantly based on the abundance and availability and as men moved down from caves into semi plains or foothills this is a predominant material available in earlier rural and hillside temples temples were built on the local raw trees and shaped on raw trees and the earlier worship was the stamba worship like if you see the pillar here this is a wooden pillar and this is worshiped as a god so there is there is many people have a theory that the stamba worship later on metamorphosed into the linga worship there is one of the theories so the earlier temples were very very simple and then had this kind of an wood and wood based uh, thing not shaped woods the trees parts of trees itself from this in in the hilly regions they use wood and then they use local material and then they use paddy and then they structure uh, beautiful huts that are, you can see the very very small entrance where we need to crawl through so this is a thoda village uh, hillside temple which is like a hut and this is a representative of how the people lived during that and then how they were using the local material now rock mass here this is where after a uh, development of tooling in um, people started giving cut in caves one is a cut in where you 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 cut horizontally into this and then expand and then have a massive thing one of the earliest uh, caves barbara caves built in very very hard granite and in a beautiful polished manner this is one one prime example of a cutting cave and uh, this was a predominant structure in the jaina buddha river uh, period lot of cave systems were uh, cutting caves and mandapas were developed the other one is a cut down where a bold a grand rock uh, mass is cut down and a desert shape into this this is the ellora caves the pinnacle of temple architecture where this is a sort of a big basalt formation they have cut in horizontally and then at the first level then later they have expanded uh, something more and then on all the three sides they have done not only cut down they had done cut in into a grand corridor on all the three things with a beautiful mandapa so this is an example of how the rock mass is there what was done in uh, 9th 10th century stands now in grandeur and uh, we still have a doubt whether we can repeat this kind of construction now wood coming back to wood what we saw earlier was wood as wood it is whereas in in kerala with uh, and uh, in northeastern states with the abundance of wood they do lot of processed wood and then shaped ones and then an example in kerala where lot of rain and other things is there where there is a shortage of uh, rock material and mm -hmm. abundance of wood this is how the temples are built the base is normally granite or uh, laterite um, uh, the local compressed stone and the wall and other things is wood or uh, brick structure the interesting part is the roof the superstructure is done with the tiles the tiles unlike the the bricks these tiles are are uh, made out of very fine special kind of a mud and then they are baked to a very high degree so that they are strong and then they latch on to each other and and form a very beautiful tile related structure so this is another way of building temples with available material in a way which is suitable to the particular um, area climate this kind of with some heavy rains and then Uh, still uh, it can survive because of the heavy rains if you see the the roof extends quite a long way to protect the walls this is uh, mahadeva temple in changanagiri there is another variation in kerala in wooden temples it is a copper tapa this is a unique way of doing things 
so instead of uh, using tiles which might be heavy at a later point of time you have the standard uh, granite base and then wood and uh, mortar based uh, walls you have first to first tier in uh, the mangalore tiles which is popularly called and the second two tiles roof is made of copper and that is one of the the very popular material one abundance of copper and then uh, and it is easily shapeable and we can build a very quick temples the challenge in this type of structure is that the wood goes brittle very easily and the maximum last 200 years so every 200 years the wood and creepers and everything need to be changed so the antiquity of the kerala temples is always in question the beautiful sculptures we see there we don't know whether it is 1000 years old 800 years old or recently done 200 years before so this is madhur anandeshwara vinayaka temple now coming to the next uh, regional uh, innovation the baked bricks if you go to west bengal there is abundance of the delta region where you get beautiful clay material where you get fantastic terracotta or shab so the material is used predominantly in bengal temples where they use it for two types one the normal bricks and then shaped bricks the the speciality here is the shaped bricks like how we do sculptures the shapes one 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 pillar is in multiple shapes this is shaped in uh, wet clay baked and then fixed together so that it becomes a structure and with the mortar and uh, uh, brick kind of under roof so this is a unique structure where it stays for a longer period and then uh, we we find it in the west bengal region or the eastern region mostly uh, brick temples of 500 years old are still there this is primarily because of the initial wood initial uh, terracotta and then glazed coating on top of the terracotta which provides deterioration now coming to a detour on lime mortar the bonding material nowadays we we say uh, a lot of advertisement about fevical where you got a lot of funny advertisements and in olden days we never had fevical and other things lime mortar was the only bonding material for structure and other things but there is a natural one it's a thrown cycle how it does is that in the natural limestone mound quarries in foothills and other things when you heat this this becomes calcium oxide and then it becomes quick lime and when you uh, spray water on this this becomes a, a powder and like a lime putty and when you slake and then uh, clean it with water and when you spray it with water and when you mix with the sand and uh, some amount of other material this mixture when it is applied along with the brick it becomes solid when it is kept uh, by spraying water for 28 days and after that it is a, it is a very solid one and it stays for a longer period and ideally it is used for walls and not used for floor conditions where uh, it is wet or in flooding conditions so this is a life cycle where again this deteriorates into lime and then goes through the natural cycle lime mortar has been used from egyptian times and then in each region they they have their own special ingredients uh, egg yolk palms uh, and then a uh, lot of other ingredients local uh, minerals and the local uh, herbs everything is added to make it uh, solidified or in a different color or with a different sheen the curation period unlike cement which sets in 2 days or 3 days it takes more time to cure and then dissipation 
and uh, the but the plus is it is got a lighter and a porous bond where the building breathes and then it has got a lighter bond uh, when you uh, this is true when you are renovating old temples particularly of limestone there are experts available here in this group they will be able to talk better instead of using uh, uh, limestone if you use cement it will spoil the entire structure and it may fall out because the cement even though it has got a better bond it has got a heavy weight and then uh, it is not a porous bond it is ideal for terracotta and the problem is it decays over a period and brittle when it is exposed to sun so this is where a coating of lime uh, on a regular uh, uh, period uh, it extends so this is one of the reasons why every 10 year 12 year mahakumbha abhishekam and everything we give a complete lime coating to all our vimanas and uh, uh, gopuras primarily to ensure that the bonding material stays it is the failure to do this will go to deteriorate and then many big temples like uh, uh, our great konark temple have been damaged primarily because of the non maintenance so coming to rock the material that rocks when you talk about rocks rocks is a combination of multiple minerals primarily it comes out of magma which is the the semi liquid hot lava that is coming out of from the core so when it comes and then when it cools it forms one type of rock called igneous rocks primarily if it is cooled on the open area it is called basalt and if it is cooled uh, in a little lower area with uh, a yeah, 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 steady cooling this is rapid cooling it is granite is formed when this rocks are by heat or weathering and erosion they become brittle and become sand and other things so we get sedimentary rocks so these are uh, with the chemical reaction we get limestone we get sandstone which is Depo so repeated deposition of the sand compaction and lithification so it gives sandstone and uh, limestone which is predominantly uh, this is available in some region sandstone is available in the in the in the coastal regions then when the sedimentary rocks are changed by pressure heat or chemical reaction it metamorphoses into different type of rocks so it is either pressure or heat then we get a different class of metamorphic rock some one of the the classic thing is schist which is used in karnataka for hoysala temples and then we have marble which is used in rajasthan temples limestone mm, predominantly in himalayan foothills sandstone in beach uh, regions basalt uh, in the, in the volcanic regions and it is very famous in maharashtra and uh, central india granite predominantly available very well available in south india so these are the major rock types if you see this this is by melting of rocks and this is by weathering and then this is by changing under pressure and uh, deep crust in the upper mantle so we get uh, granite sandstone or gneiss which is one of the hardest material if you see some of the examples of uh, igneous rocks which are used for temple construction we can talk about basalt pumice stone which floats the the famous uh, sedu uh, bridge in rameswaram is said to be used with the pumice stones where you get floating stones where this is sudden cooling even with the gas on top of it so that the gas bubbles are trapped and it gives air pockets inside so that the stone floats another interesting uh, thing is gabbro this is the the dark uh, granite which is very well used in some of the uh, tamil nadu temples the granite these are igneous rocks the next thing is a metamorphic rocks where 
the sedimentary rocks are pressurized and then they transform into layers. The challenge with metamorphic rocks is due to pressure or the sun, there are layers. And then uh, when you uh, when you hit on the layers, it splits among the, the pressure planes. Some of the, the popular ones are marble, nice, which is used in uh, uh, Mahabalivaram as well as in uh, our uh, Big temple of Tanjavur and nearby schist, which is used in uh, Hoysalas, soapstone, which is very popular medium for Hoysalas, slate, normally used for construction, it is used for uh, some of the roof uh, panels and then earlier uh, megalithic burial sites. Quartzite is one of the strongest one, but we don't use it heavily for temple buildings. In sedimentary rocks in uh, the the coastal regions, you get lime, you get sandstone. Uh, many popular temples like uh, Kajiraho and uh, our uh, Kanjiburam Kailas, another temple is built out of sandstone. Whereas the northern Himalayan foothills, you get limestone abundantly, and uh, dolomite is used. Shale is not used because it can easily break on the, the pressure lanes. So in a nutshell, these are the three major categories of rocks. When you talk about rocks, how hard is the rock is classified by which scratches what. So when you talk about the basic rock, we can scratch it by fingernail, where you can scratch it by copper knife, copper penny or knife or steel nail or mason and drill bit. So from top, which is a powdery rock to the diamond, it is scaled from 1 to 10. It is a logarithmic scale. When you compare the scale to the popular um, building material, soapstone used in Hoysalas is more scale of 1 to 2. So it is very easy to sculpture. You can do beautiful fine structures, but its stability and weight bearing uh, is a question. Marble, a little compromise. Still, you can uh, make beautiful sculptures, but load bearing, little tough, but load bearing improves. Granite, toughest material, and uh, many of the South Indian temples are built out of granite where they had done beautiful sculptures which is very hard to make when compared to Hoysala. Hoysala sculptures are very easy to make because of the flexibility, whereas granite, it is very, very tough. The other important factor is the uniaxial compressive strength. That is, when you put pressure on a particular rock, at one point it crumbles and loses its character. This is measured in kilogram from square centimeter. If you see an indication of the igneous rock, granite and other things can handle one ton or two and a half ton per square centimeter. That is a load. And uh, their hardness is six to seven on the scale of 10, basalt and other things. Whereas the sedimentary rocks, they don't have that kind of a strong thing. Like schist, which is used there, is having very low compressive strength and then very low hardness so that it is very easy to uh, build the structures but very, very uh, tough to um, make grand, heavy loaded uh, construction. Whereas sandstone or limestone is intermediate between the igneous rocks. When it comes to metamorphic, the rarity is the nasus, which uh, many of uh, the South Indian temples are built. They vary in uh, compressive strength and has got good more skill. Quartzite, very rare. Marble, predominantly used in Rajasthan and other areas. It's a, a combination between these two. It has got a fairly decent compressive strength and uh, more scale also. So it is very flexible and beautiful material. Many of the modern temples are built either in marble or in concrete. So if you see India, there are various types of deposits uh, based on the geological activity and when the Himalayans are formed, there are various deposits of them. If you analyze it, you can clearly see the, the sedimentary rock types. 
the entire andhra tamil nadu course all the regional uh, temples use sandstones the same stored here in the upper up region and uh, uh, like this is the limestone deposits where uh, the himalayan and other things predominantly limestone deposits and uh, when it comes to the metamorphic rocks this is the granite granite belt where mostly granite is available and extensively used and then there is the igneous rocks of uh, the basalt category which is the predominant maharashtra uh, area when you go to orissa and uh, the the other area you get a different kind of an compressed uh, gondwana uh, rock condolite rock which is uh, of a different beautiful category and uh, handled by many of the orissan temples so by going by the region and the type of rocks available we are able to identify and then build temples now we are going to see in the next 10 minutes 15 minutes uh, the varieties of temples and then how they are built and then how the construction material designs on the structure and the grandness many of the earlier megalithic types like uh, hirabenakalu uh, uh, which has a, a very big megalithic it is slate and other things where you can see the the slate material cut up and then uh, stacked into burials some of them are uh, having indications of places of worship and other thing these are all naturally sheared layers coming to the sedimentary rocks the the prime material on the the uh, the seashore area and other things is sandstone which is easily available this is compressed sand and uh, so the advantage is that it has got a very good compressive strength and most clearly is also reasonably 4 to 5 one of the grand examples is kailasanatha temple in kanchi where the early pallava period they experimented a lot in sandstone but the minus point is Uh, it is prone for erosion and then uh, over a period it starts becoming brittle with the chemical and other actions so later on before chola era they slowly converted it to granite which is a little tough material but with chance for a longer period even even in this uh, material here the basement the first level uh, vedi and on the roof the slabs are of granite the rest is sandstone no the other material is limestone where when you go to himalayan foothills there is a huge deposition of limestone and that is uh, the predominant material for building where you talk about uh, a yeah, compression strength of 200 to 2000 kilo uh, per square centimeter and the most square of 3 to 4 the challenge here is the grainness and it is be limestone being a, a very reactive one it reacts very fast with uh, the uh, weather conditions and uh, acidic environment spoils and makes it brittle and even the sculptures because of the the coarse grain the sculptures are also doesn't come out so sharp so that is limestone now the other variety of sedimentary rock is the laterite which is primarily basaltic sand and other things which is compressed over a period of time if you see orissa or if you see kerala uh, even in road side people cut rocks slice rocks like how they cut bread and other things and then they build a building rocks and then they construct houses out of it so most of the temples in kerala and in orissa are built uh, on the laterite blocks prime examples is lingaraja and other big temples in bhubaneswar including konar was done out of uh, laterite again fairly reasonable uh, load strength 1500 to 2500 kilo the most scale is also pretty good so they are able to build very grand and high end towering temples where they can stack Uh, stone upon stone and upon stone upon stone upon up to uh, 200 feet plus 
and then build granite things and then they are able to handle the kind of complexity. Now, we are coming to the next class of metamorphic rocks. So, lower end the metamorphic rock is a soapstone, which is uh, compressed, uh, 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 pressurized and chemically transformed uh, sand. The soapstone or the schist is very soft when it is cut up from the covered air. But over a period when it uh, is exposed to weather and sun, it becomes a little harder. So it is very convenient where you unearth a fresh stone, do sculpturing, and then once the sculpturing and everything, you, you can scratch by nail or you can uh, use uh, the chisels which are normally used for wood. So that is the level of softness. It gives fantastic, fantastic uh, fineness in sculptures. But the problem is you can't build a very tall edifice. You have 50, 60 feet kind of height. This is the maximum height you can go. They had tried Bhubuja temples beyond that, six, seven, eight stories in Belo, and it has failed. And due to construction, once it has started crumbling. So this is the plus and this is the minus. So what they did in um, Faisalas is that to uh, do the compression strength and then to handle it, they do a lot of star uh, formation, stellate design, so that the pressure is expanded lot more outwards. So this is one of the advantages of stellate structure. Now, the other variation of metamorphic rock, when it is refined further, it becomes marble. And many of the Rajasthan and uh, Gujarat built where abundance of marble is available, uh, it is done. So here the, the, the strength is 700 to 2000 per kilogram, kilogram and a move of uh, 3 to 4. So it is a very good balance, but you can't build a very tall structures to a certain extent. And you can also uh, build colorful, beautiful sculptures and edifices. So it is an ideal uh, preferred material for rich temples. Typically, ISKCON and all this use only marble. Now, coming to the big daddies, igneous rocks, granite. Granite is one of the hardest uh, material available. What we talk as granite uh, in commercial terms consists of multiple ones, knees, and, uh, and uh, uh, there are multiple variations of commercial granite. And uh, the advantage of this is that Minimal is 1000 plus, 2500 kilogram. Solid weight it can handle. More scale, one of the top, top most. So it enables you to uh, build very, very, very high, uh, typically of the order of uh, 220, 210 kind of an, uh, feet high temple, purely by stacking in a structured way. And then it has got a huge 80 ton uh, shikara. That is possible because this can handle the load and it can uh, stack up very high. And the cylinders with the minimal cylinders, it can handle a huge load. That is the advantage of granite. At the same time, it is tough to sculpture. The sculptures um, in granite takes long time. And then that's why I personally rate the sculptures of Cholas and uh, the Vijayanagara period are far more great than the Hoysalas because they have worked in a very tough material where it is very difficult to shape. Looking at other igneous rock, the basalt. So th this is primarily the lava coming out and cooling on the top layer and then it cools fast and forms basalt. The plus point is that it has got a more scale of six to seven which is strong, which can build, and then it, can, it can, can handle very big load because of the, the porous nature and other things. But the problem is it has got very, 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 very big grain strength, and it is very difficult. This is done out of local blackstone and other things. This is a Bhumija temple. So the sculptures cannot be so fine. This is something in between the Hoysara sculptures and granite. 
where the, the it also very not conducive to polishing like granite so it has got its pluses and minuses and it also allows you to build big temples this is the a typical structure in the maharashtra and central india region now the interesting concept ramappa temples kakatiyas did some innovation and then while they were building while they were tem building temples uh, the base was in sandstone granite and other things when they started building long and uh, very tall uh, gopurams okay um, uh, to handle load initially uh, brick and mortar was used again still that was a problem and the innovation in uh, in kakatiya was the the floating bricks the which are lighter than your normal uh, mud mud bricks and granite but has got more compression strength and uh, it is easy to manipulate primarily this is when you do bricks they have special mixtures of when when we are baking bricks they do special mixtures of uh, other material and sawdust and other things so that it, it looks like a, a, a rock but it is not a rock it is a brick so that is the the innovation of ramappa temple and uh, this rocks float in water that is another interesting so it is a synthetic rock babu sir please conclude yes sir conclude five minutes please. yeah uh, five minutes i am winding up okay. this is the last two minutes. so when it comes to sedimentary rocks uh in konark we can see multiple mixture of materials used laterite for the foundation and then condolite uh, the knees for the walls and uh, chloride schist for the door jams lintel and others where you need fineness and then uh, glassy finish and then iron beams are used as a buttress and to have control and lime mortar is used for bonding and setting up the the various uh, rock things. so a combination of material you used depending on what is relevant for a particular function now a little uh, impact on how your rock type impacts the pillar size and width what pillar which is uh, of a uh, schist or stone which has got a very low compression strength so the 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 pillars are very very thick and whereas the span is very narrow when you compare this with uh, the granite uh, pillars of vijayanagara in the ameswaram corridor you have a very very slender pillar but tall and then it, it, it takes a wide weight but you see the span this is what selecting the rock type and structure we can do different things the other aspect is impact of vimana height and width when you look at the schist based uh, vimanas hoysala they can handle only three or four stories max because beyond that the load won't handle and even that they do lot of stellate kind of an extension to handle the weight whereas <coughs> when it come to laterite of uh, orissa the compression stress is very high so they have built a fairly higher the dula which is one and a half times uh, the mandaba in front but again it crumbled because the bonding material and other things uh, did not uh, get good enough maintenance and then over a period become loose and then came out but one thing stands tall for 2200 years plus which is a bagres isra built in granite primarily because of the precise construction and then uh, the load bearing capacity and alignment the beauty here is it doesn't use any bonding material just locking and precise stacking so this is how depending on the rock type you can aid, either build smaller or wider um, monuments or taller or bigger monuments now a quick peek on modern temples in modern concrete which is around 400 to 600 kg which is already moldable any arch anything it is easily available in one week or 10 days you can build all these arches 
whereas it, it took ages to build it. So this is one of the golden temples with the golden paint and other things which is available in the loop. In future, this is how things are going to be. This is the Vrindavan uh, Chandradaya Mandir, uh, which is built in RCC. And uh, it's a grand one, 700 feet tall, 70 floor, multiple lifts inside, and then view towers. This is how the future is looking up in terms of RCC and with the flexibility. With the load bearing capacity, you can become taller and wider temples. So, in a nutshell, in the last uh, 50 minutes, we saw how materials have progressed over a period of time and the three basic materials and uh, what is perishable material, how some of the material does long decay and how the material selection decides the temple design, height, width and the sculpture fineness. And then we saw some of the examples of various material and uh, we saw the future, how temples are going to like look like in future. A question to you and the things which popularly asked is that we see so many ancient temples still existing, but we don't see many of the old palaces of the kings in so what we see is only 300, 400 year old palaces, but we don't see anything beyond that. Why? That is a thing which I leave it to the audience to point to counter. Thank you. Thank you for the interesting uh, one hour time. And then if you need anything, you can contact me. You can see the video later in the Babu for Heritage YouTube channel. Thank you for supporting and subscribing. Sir, can I ask one small question? Hello. Yes. Sir, uh, Namaste, sir. One moment, I will take not more than that. Uh, first uh, namaste, of... sir. Thanks for joining us. And then... No, 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 no. no. It will be very interesting. It is the Guru who no, are not the inspirations see, for what me. What happens is, sir, let me take only one moment because valuable time. People are waiting. So, this really touched my heart because my thesis from Hyderabad Central University under the supervision of Professor Aloka Parashar said is evolution of building technology of all the temples, Buddhist structures, rocket structures, brick, stone, everything. Yes. Other than that, I have so far not heard any scholar that have scholar that have. So I appreciate so I appreciate Professor Babuji for his uh, uh, what you call interest in the subject of building technology going beyond the buildings. He has gone beyond the buildings and he has touched upon the human facade. So I congratulate him. Congratulate him. should be should be one seminar should be seminar should be on building technology materials uh, and how the project will be handled during those days like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you for your inputs. I have a lot of doubts in many things. I will connect with you later. But uh, here they are very busy now, but we, we can talk uh, over the phone. Sure. I would like to know more about the Ramapa temple. Uh, if you can uh, give yes, one lecture. Next time, time, I, next, time I, next time I will do, sir. I will do it. Yes, madam. Thank you. Professor Poonam, madam, please conclude. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 thank you very much uh, for your wonderful presentation and uh, tracing the... Yeah, you can call me Babu. Hello. Yeah. Tracing the trajectory of uh, building materials for sacred spaces for so RCC beams. Uh, it's been uh, wonderful listening to you. When you touched on Jammu and Kashmir, it is very rich because of which could be added on in some other presentation, maybe. Then another thing which I feel is that we are, uh, we as uh, uh, we as uh, historians or as uh, as uh, who have passion for uh, for heritage. We only look at uh, what happened earlier and how these temples have stayed till now. But what I find <coughs> missing in our uh, heritage papers is the conservation aspect of these temples. Because if I look at the Shinto temples of uh, Japan, what I find is after every two decades, they rebuild this temple and that technique 
of rebuilding and the originality of the temple has remained. So that is something we need to look at, though it is not possible cause to make such huge structures now, but we definitely need to look into the skills which were used for making these temples and for making it available to the future uh, generations. And uh, to answer your last uh, question about why ancient temples still exist and not the palaces, maybe the ancient temples still exist because it is a part of a living heritage. People still go there, they worship there. Of course, it has uh, hindered the, I mean, they have uh, been uh, misused also, but that is one answer I can think of uh, where uh, the temples uh, are concerned. They are still existing. And now I can request Nadeem ji if he wants to say something on this. My co chairperson. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. A wonderful presentation. It added so much to uh, my knowledge. Uh, definitely, I would uh, agree to uh, Poonam Chaudhary for the last question that why uh, uh, the, you know, palaces could not survive whether the temples do because temples remain in in uh, the everyday life of uh, everybody and at every time because people go there worship there uh, while uh, palaces are only bound to tourism and uh, moreover you can uh, you can say that uh, uh, the secret thoughts that we have towards worshiping places keep them alive as well because uh, uh, if you would uh, take it psychologically, it would it would work as well. Uh, we take care of uh, sacred places more than we could take care of anything else. Uh, the uh, the one thing that I I feel and I would ask to uh, Mr. Babu, uh, it like he he imparted his wonderful knowledge. Like uh, Mr. Babu, you imparted so much wonderful knowledge on the construction of uh, these temples. Uh, uh, the material specifically uh, uh, regarding the building, regarding the construction, uh, whether as uh, being uh, an, uh, a student of aesthetics, uh, there, there is so much on, on the decorative uh, part and on the uh, ornamentation of uh, these wonderful temples, uh, like even uh, the pictures you have shown, uh, materials like granite, they have beautiful sculptures and reliefs on the, on the surfaces and on the walls and even on the on the roofs so uh, would there be any possibility that you would add something on the ornamentation material or you would let us know that what ornamentation materials were used were they like changing uh, according to the material that was used for the construction uh, or is there any similarity because of uh, the subject matter because uh, the temple is the you know house of gods so kindly if you could uh, cast some light hello yes hello babu sir हेलो अंसारी जी हमारी आवाज आ रही है अनम्यूट और सर आ आ रही है जी हाँ नदीम आलम सर हेलो यस यस डॉक्टर मिश्रा आई कैन हियर यू हाँ एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम बाबू सर फ्रॉम योर साइड Nadim sir asked a question. I was just replying to him, uh, saying that, uh, like how in this presentation I have focused on the architectural or structural aspects, uh, I can do a, a separate session, similar session on the sculptural aspects of materials and other things, which is a, a which will look at a similar uh, session. Now, uh, next session time. Thank you, 
professor poonam choudhary uh, for given time i chair the session and uh, uh, mr nadeem alam sir uh, as, as a co chair and uh, mr shiv shankar babu given a nice talk in this webinar series uh, actually time kam hai lekin babu uh, babu ji ka jo uh, slides hai bahut achhi rehti hai aur ye unka हमारे वेबिनार में थर्ड या फोर्थ टॉक है और हर बार वो बहुत अच्छी टॉक और बहुत अच्छे स्लाइड से करते हैं तो आगे भी जैसा कि नदीम साहब ने कहा है तो कल्चरल एस्पेक्ट पर हम चर्चा करेंगे उनसे और बहुत बहुत थैंक्स मिस्टर शिवशंकर बाबू थैंक यू ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ नेक्स्ट सेशन अवर